Okay, so we look at the Raid World War 2 closed beta at 21 by 9. The developers of Payday 2 are working to create this new title, Raid World War 2, and I've mixed feelings about this. Whilst I love the World War 2 setting and the idea behind the game, I am worried about the quality of the execution after the issues that have surrounded Payday 2. But before I talk about my thoughts on this and my time with the beta, let's cover the ultra wide support. So on first loading it up, you'll find that the game has no ultra-wide support. Trying to select a resolution will only give you the option to select 16x9 resolutions, and if you select something like 2560x1440, it actually squeezes the image for some reason whilst keeping black bars on the sides. The other issue I found with this is that after selecting a resolution, it wouldn't save that resolution after the game was exited and restarted, so each time you'd have to reselect the resolution you wanted. The other issue was that the mouse cursor was way off in terms of being aligned to menu elements, so the cursor would need to be way down and left or way down and right in order to select a button. This made menu navigation a bit difficult, especially as the keyboard can't be used for most menu interactions. However, after messing around with the config files of the game, I actually stumbled across a fix. If you manually input the resolution into your config file, then it will not only save that resolution every time you start the game, but it will also correctly use that resolution if it is ultra wide. So you can get the game to fill out your screen properly. Now the issue here is that everything is stretched from 16x9, apart from the HUD, that actually locks to 16x9. Amazingly though, and this I really was surprised it worked, you can manually input your aspect ratio of choice into the same settings file in the same way that you did with the resolution. So, to do both these things, type in percent app data percent into Windows. Here it will load up the roaming folder. Just go back one folder to the app data folder and find the local folder in there. Inside the local folder is a folder called Raid World War 2 Beta, and inside there is a single file called renderer underscore settings XML. Open that file in Notepad. Scroll down the file until you see the resolution line. Input your current resolution, then just under that is the aspect ratio line. Change that number to 2.4 if you're on 3440 by 1440. Technically it's 2.889, but 2.4 is easier. If you're on 2560 by 1080, then you can also change it to 2.4, but again, if you want the exact number, then it's 2.3704. 2.4 is so close to the correct number, that's why it's so much easier just to go with that, but yeah, choose whatever you want. Now save the file and close it, and off you play. So now the game is working at 21 by 9 nicely. The only gripe I still have is the FOV isn't high enough. There isn't an ability to make it higher, and I really would like it a bit higher. But the game shows promise that this is all possible. So in its current state, now that the gameplay correctly shows off more on the sides of the screen thanks to the little mod we did, the HUD remains stuck to 16 by 9 Screen effects stretch to use the entire screen space, menus locked to 16 by 9 with black bars, loading screens are 21 by 9 cutscenes are both 16 by 9 with black bars, and 16 by 9 zoom to fill the screen. That applies to the comedic Hitler skits at the end of missions. Even after doing all these fixes though, I should note that there is one last annoying problem, wherein the detection circles that are supposed to be above enemy heads are actually way off to the left of them, which makes both noticing the state of alert of an enemy and also guessing where they are rather difficult. Also, lastly, the in-game menus have a slight glitch where you can see the game world behind in a little slit at the very bottom, but it's a tiny point. Performance wise the game is not currently running great, so it's locked to 60fps, yep I'm not happy about that, and graphically it's not a great looking game. Textures are a bit muddy, nothing looks amazing, but it's also not terrible, this does mean it should be able to run very well, however optimization is still clearly an issue as the game frequently drops frames as you move about, especially with fast camera movements looking around the place. At 3440 by 1440 on highest graphic settings, which by the way is literally a single slider for effects, that hopefully will be improved as well. On a GTX 1080 Ti, I could not maintain anywhere close to a steady 60fps at all times. It would constantly lose frames. Also, because of the game's insistence on not saving graphic settings and the like, I advise going into NVIDIA Control Panel and forcing VSync and triple buffering off if you're on a G-Sync monitor. At least turn triple buffering off if you're on a VSync monitor. Obviously, put it back on if you're getting screen tearing, but I haven't heard of people getting screen tearing at the moment. The beta also has no controller support, but I'm sure that will be present in the final release. 
You can change your aim and normal movement sensitivity on the mouse, but first you must untick the bind together option. I spent a while confused why I couldn't manipulate the sliders independently until I saw that tick box. I'm not sure why you'd want them to be bound together at any point. And there is also no controls menu, so you can't see what buttons do what. Okay, so gameplay wise, the premise is pretty simple. It's a first person shooter, and rather standard one at that in terms of what you do. You go out in a group of four on raids. These raids are essentially missions that just require you to complete preset tasks, such as pick up dynamite and blow up a bridge, or kill off a number of camps of enemies, or blow up an airship. They are admittedly fun, and the entire time you are swarmed by tons, and I mean tons of enemies. They do very little damage to you per person, certainly in normal difficulty, obviously pushing that to hard or very hard will make things more dangerous, but regardless, enemies are not as dangerous as normal games would have them be. You have four primary weapons to choose from and a single pistol, and these weapons just split across the four roles. So you can choose between having a rifle or shotgun or submachine gun or assault rifle, and once you choose the type of role you want to play as, you select the nationality of your character, so a Brit, American, Russian or German. There is some depth to this with a skill tree to unlock the upgrades to your characters, and it works so that you can level up each character individually, and you can have five characters saved at once. The skill tree only allows you to select a single upgrade each level, which is why you have multiple characters in the same role, because you might want to specialise one character differently to the others, because you can't have all skills on one character. Selecting one skill means you can't select another skill. Now, when you get into a level, you sometimes will start in stealth. This way you can actually complete a good bit of the mission, if not all of it, stealthily, and if your other characters are AI controlled, then they'll just wait at the start until you get spotted, which always happens, and then they'll run over to help fight. AI pathing for them is pretty good, except for when you need reviving, then they can get pretty terrible at finding you, they usually left me to die in most situations. The game does feature the ability to pick up dead bodies and hide them, enemies have detection meters, and actually the stealth is pretty well implemented. There is some gore to fighting, with limbs possible to blow off, but it looks pretty cartoonish, and bodies usually despawn very quickly, which is annoying. There is a lockpicking mechanic too, which you'll have to use a lot to unlock everything from doors to crates. It's not a complete chore, it's been designed to be possible to complete with minimal annoyance, however you do do it a lot, which, as easy as it may be to do, it still gets stale quickly. I must say I would love this game to be a local co-op game, it's great having 4 player online, but this would work brilliantly for a local co-op title. It's not graphically demanding to run if you have the horsepower, and I think this game would be great fun to play in split screen. But all in all, what does this all remind you of? Yep. That's right, Payday 2. There are huge similarities. I'm pretty much 100% sure it's the same engine. The core ideas behind the game are the same. Now, I will say that isn't a completely bad thing. Payday 2 had some great fun stuff, and I would easily say that my time with this game makes me believe that I would prefer it over Payday 2 because of the setting and the more open levels instead of always just breaking into a bank. This sort of works to my taste, but I can't get away from the fact that this feels like a reskin of Payday 2 in many ways. It just feels like they're slapping a coat of paint onto it and calling it a new game. I hope that's not true, but at this point in time, yeah, that's how it feels. I hope as we get closer to launch, and of course when I cover this at launch, we'll find out exactly what the game's like, but yeah, I am cautious about it. So anyway, I'm going to give this a WAF score of 2. It has a lot of 21 by 9 issues, and as much as I love John Cleese, and I really love him, I was like, damn, I really want to like this game when I first started playing and saw his opening cutscene, this game has a bit to do to win me over. I will though be watching it as it caught my attention enough, and I'll be sure to cover it here on the channel when it launches like I said, and try and give the beta a go if you can, this free weekend is over but you can play the beta if you've pre-ordered the special edition, please don't pre-order, or I believe if you own Payday 2 already, it's worth giving it a shot if you feel interested in getting the full release. Anyway, I hope that gives you some information how the game runs at 21x9. Give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 21x9, head over to my channel, LaWaf website. Hopefully I've covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, the links to my Patreon page are in the description and Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later. Oh. 
Down. Hold it. 